Liberia presidential election heading to a runoff after tight race with no winner. Is the popularity of the incumbent President George Ware waning? Also on the program, we take a look at the role of fact-checking in elections. On Roundup Africa, we'll highlight some of the major stories from across the African continent with Chiamaka Mwafo. I am Ayuba Ilya. Thank you for joining. Liberia's 2023 presidential election, the closest in two decades, is set for a runoff. Official provisional results announced by the Electoral Commission show that neither the incumbent president, George Ware, nor his main opponent, Joseph Boakai, secured the majority vote, while the football, footballer turned politician, George Ware, received 43.8% of the vote. His main opponent, Joseph Boakai, had 43.5% with over 98% of the ballots counted. This election was significant as it marked the first time Liberia organized a contest without international support since the end of a 14-year-old civil war in 20, 2003. Now, while the election was relatively peaceful, some voters will have to recast their ballots due to the theft of ballot boxes in one district. Now, the runoff is scheduled for 7th of November as no candidate received the required 50% for a first round victory, setting up a rematch between Ware and Boakai, similar to the 2017 election. Joining us to further deliberate on the matter is Oscar Muba, the Executive Director, Journalist Initiative for Peaceful Elections in Liberia and CEO of Live First TV in Liberia. Thank you so much for joining us, Oscar. It's a pleasure, and I'd like to say many thanks to you, Aiba, and uh, Chimeka, and the rest of the team for extending this invitation to us here in Liberia, uh, particularly Oscar, to speak on your platform. I am humbled. All right. Now, Judge Ware's Rocks to Riches story doesn't appear to resonate with the people anymore, going by the outcome of the just concluded polls. What are we expecting to see in the runoff elections in the coming days? So, the president, we are, uh, is the incumbent president, and so he is doing everything possible along with his team, his cabinet members, and other members on his campaign team to ensure that they can all secure a second term big. However, many Liberians home here feel that the, the government or the president has not done well to deserve a second term. And so they are all rallying their efforts and seeing how best they can encourage each other in order to ensure that the incumbent president doesn't get re-elected. So it's a two-house race, as you said earlier on, and many Liberians home and abroad, as well as uh, international partners, are watching the process to see how the runoff goes. Hmm. All right, what are the options before Liberians? Is this a decision between the devil and the deep blue sea? considering some of the controversies around the former Vice President Joseph Bokai, uh, who, you know, was the Vice President to Samuel Doe, who was murdered by Prince Johnson, who is now close to Joseph Bokai. Yes, yeah, so at the moment in Liberia, it's, it's, it's very interesting. It's uh, an interesting unfolding here in Liberia because each side is using uh, the best propaganda available to their side so as a matter of fact, the incumbent president, George Weir, is using that as one of the uh, missionaries against the Unity Party's tender barrier, Ambassador Joseph Borka, the former pres uh, vice president of Liberia. So uh, from there came the, the CDC, the Coalition for Democratic Change, uh, that's the, the political party of which the incumbent president uh, comes from. So the CDC is using the fact that Prince Johnson, Nema County Senator, a former warlord uh, turned politician in Liberia, 
And as a matter of fact, he's going for his third term senatorial bid. And the National Elections Commission has earlier on announced him as the winner from Nima County. So the CDC is using the fact that Ambassador Boyka is having someone like Senator Prince Johnson, a former warlord, on his team, as well as the famous Bot Nikki, uh, Evangelist Milton Blay, and the rest of the others who have joined Ambassador Boyka's team. So the CDC is using that as a propaganda against the Unity Party to say, hey, look, this is a man who committed mayhem in Liberia. This is a man who took away the lives of many Liberians as a result of the civil upheaval in Liberia. And this is the particular person that the Unity Party and its tender barrier, Ambassador Joseph Boyka, is running with. However, from the end of Unity Party, uh, the, the Unity Party and its alliance political parties believe that the CDC, too, has not done much in the five and a half to six years period uh, that the Liberian people gave to President Weir through their votes in 2017, ranging from the issue about drugs in Liberia, uh, illicit uh, financial flow in Liberia, ritualistic killing, rampant corruption. Uh, so the United Party, too, is using all of these things, uh, striking poverty uh, that has come upon the Liberian people ever in the history of this country. So uh, United Party to Ambassador Boyka is using that. And mm -hmm. it's, 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 it's a tough, I can tell you for a fight, that it is a tough race. The Unity Party and the rest of the other parties that believe in the rescue mission, they are doing everything possible, amalgamating all of the forces and the resources to ensure that they can make President we are a one term. President okay. Weah, on the other hand, uh, has has tasted power, and he believes that uh, he, he he will you know he will he will get reelected. However, I think majority of the Liberian people believe that it's time that President Weah goes. Okay. Now, how fair and free is this process? How would you assess the role that the state security uh, personnel has played in the just concluded election, uh, and then going further into the runoff? Okay, so from, from my lens as a journalist, I think the, the state security has done extremely well. As a matter of fact, I can confirm to you that uh, prior to the October 10 pools, the joint security that has been headed by the Antonin General, who is also the Minister of Justice here in Liberia, uh, was able to assign security personnel, specifically like the LNP personnel, the Liberia National Police personnel, to each of the uh, candidates, uh, each of the presidential candidates. So security has been in tight. They have also been doing very well in um, arresting or apprehending uh, some next staff who have been reportedly involved into election malpractices. Mm. It's very common in elections, uh, especially in this part of the world, in Africa, uh, to see incumbents use their power of incumbency. That's what we know it here in Nigeria, whereby you see a sort of a collusion between the state police and the ruling party to, you know, intimidate or in some cases, uh, you know, try to use that in their favor to win the elections. What's the situation there in Liberia? I can say to you that the situation here in Liberia, as it relates to that, is actually rampant. Uh, government officials have been seen uh, in their vehicles uh, moving into the various counties, the political subdivisions here in Liberia, um, dishing up money to be able to win the votes of the people. Uh, they've been doing that. I can also say to you that uh, other observation missions here in Liberia have complained about the situation. Uh, the European Union observation mission in Liberia monitoring uh, our elections here issued a press release uh, a couple of days ago to that effect. The Unity Party, too, uh, also issued a press statement to that effect that uh, the ruling establishment has been using uh, the, the country resources at the expense of other competing parties 
you know, in these elections. So yes, I can say that for a fight, uh, there are rumors that have been in the corners here in Liberia that the CDC uh, has used about 50 million United States dollars uh, to finance their campaign, including reports of uh, some of these monies been given to journalists in order to uh, take the side of the government. However, these informations are, are, are still, um, they are still allegation. Okay. Uh, but I think, I think it's, it's all over in the street corners in Liberia. All right, uh, now what's the confidence level uh, on the electoral body to conduct a credible uh, election? That's uh, how confident are Liberians on the whole process? So this is the system that we have here in Liberia. And so Liberians are working with the system. However, they have expressed serious concerns. Uh, and these concerns range from the fact that the election management body, which in Liberia we call the National Elections Commission, uh, the chairperson and the rest of the board of commissioners are appointed by the president. So given the fact that the chair and the rest of the board of commissioners uh, are appointed by the president, so it is highly speculated that these people will be loyal to the president. They will take instructions from the president. As a matter of fact, there are also wide allegations uh, that the National Elections Commission boss have been reportedly involved into some communication With okay, are you there? Hello? I not to uh, the process. Are you getting me? Yes, yes, go ahead, please. Yes, so Liberians are not, not too confident by the form and manner the National Elections Commission that is being headed by Devieta Brown Lassana is uh, conducting the process, especially the post-election. You know, the, the reading of the provisional results, it has been marked by a number of mistakes or irregularities ranging from mistakes in percentages being announced by the NEC boss, also uh, the failure of the National Elections Commission to adhere to uh, the time that they have set to be able to announce results and many other uh, um, discrepancies in the pronouncement of the preliminary results okay. coming out of the other temples. Okay, now let's talk about the uh, tenure uh, of uh, President George Ware. How has the country fared in, times of, in terms of uh, fight against corruption? It is, it is one of the major uh, campaign promises he made to deal with the issue of corruption. From an independent uh, standpoint, and as a journalist, I can say to you, uh, colleagues, that um, I, I think since the, the the administration of President Weir, and like you correctly said, he said that he will have, you know, uh, uh, clamped down on corruption, but, but many Liberians do not see, you know, the statement coming to reality because uh, many of his government officials have received sanction from the United States uh, government by and through the agencies, you know, the the the, uh, the state security uh, secretary uh, issued the Maniski uh, sanction. So you you can recall that the president, Minister of State, Nathaniel Fallow McGill. Uh, the National Port Authority boss, uh, um, Bill Tuari, and the Solicitor General, first time in the country history for the Solicitor General to be sanctioned uh, by the U.S. government. All of these things are happening under the leadership of a man who claimed that he would have clamped down on corruption. Businesses are complaining, especially Liberian-owned businesses. Remember, the president did say to Liberians upon taking over that Liberians would no longer be spectators in their own economy. But you will hear many Liberians say they are no longer even spectators. In fact, they are outside of the field. You know, so uh, the, the resources 
in Liberia are just among the very few uh, minority in the country. Mm. But the vast Oscar. majority are complaining. Okay, Oscar, here we yeah. are. We are talking about a country with more than 50% of the population living below 1.90 cents uh, per day. Uh, and, you know, you could say that that's very, very high in terms of poverty rate. Uh, what are some of the policies or programs that you can point to under President George where as initiatives aimed at dealing with this high rate of poverty? Well, so I don't speak for the government. I'm, I'm a journalist. I don't speak for the government, but from, 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 my, from my own background, background as a journalist uh, did come up with the PAPD Popo agenda for prosperity and the, uh, saying to Liberians that they will have raised over a million plus they have but that did not work. The president promised that he will have uh, cut 20% of his salary uh, and ensure that the money can be programs that has not worked and fight variants continue to get poor and poorer so uh the situation here is is actually um is, is actually alarming for many liberians many liberians have turned into beggars uh, i can say that for a fight even people who once uh who afford daily meal for their family they have to go around begging in Liberia, we say hustle. They got to hustle. They got to go out and pull. So the, the government came up with a, a, a policy action. According to actual intent of that policy, it was to ensure that those who were making high wages, high salary, you know, are on, uh, are on par with those who are doing equal job. But however, even civil servants, even civil servants that were making two three hundred dollars uh, you will not imagine that their salaries too have been caught well, as state security personnel. That's how grave the situation is in Liberia at the moment. Okay. All right. So uh, let's conclude this conversation, Oscar. Uh, ahead of the runoff elections, uh, what 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 are we expecting to see in terms of the logistical arrangements and uh, what are the options for the major? Uh, you know, uh, contenders in this election uh, to be able to, you know, win the elections once and for all? So everyone, everyone is trying to remember before going to the October 10 elections, uh, the two leading political parties, the CDC, that's the Coalition for Democratic Change of President George Weir, and the unity party of former vice president joseph Borka, each party told liberians that they will have won on the first ballot you know so they, they there was a famous saying here that uh, for, uh, uh, uh you know winning on the first ballot uh, one time victory and that's that's the the mantra that each of them campaign on so the fight did not work and now Liberians are going to a runoff in November on the 7th. Uh, each side is going to do everything possible to a point that they can be elected. So like I said, the incumbent is fighting to retain uh, uh, why the unity party is fighting to ensure that President Weir becomes a one-term president. And I can say to you that uh, people have been meeting. There are conversations right now taking place on both sides. The CDC is going out, is reaching out, is not taking it uh, lightly. The Unity Party too is reaching out. I, I, I heard from, from an inside source that the Unity Party is expected to receive a very big endorsement from other parties. And we wait to see, it's too early but I think many Liberians are determined to make this president a one-time president. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Oscar. Uh, 
Oscar Moba, the Executive Director, Journalist Initiative for Peaceful Elections in Liberia and also CEO of Lib First TV in Liberia. Thank you for joining us on Africa Update and giving us this insight. It is my pleasure and I'd like to say many thanks to you and the team for reaching out to us to be able to speak on issues happening in our country and I'm always open to this uh, relationship and looking forward to a more mutual relationship right. between okay, thank you, you so guys much. on that side All right, and uh, the team here in Liberia. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot. All right. You're watching Africa Updates on Trust TV, reaching you from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. After the break, we'll take a look at the role of fact-checking in elections. Join us again for more. All right, thanks for staying with us. Now, fact checkers in Liberia help clean up media space during country's volatile election season by verifying or dispelling claims that political parties and supporters make. Now, fact checkers say that they have reduced election season chaos. VOA's Senanu Todd reports from Monrovia, Liberia. In the waterside market in Monrovia, Liberia, Fact-checking journalists interview market traders and authorities to verify a riot reported on social media a few hours earlier. They say the news had caused fear and panic and agitated sections of the youth. They found, however, that the social media report was misleading. Another false report, like the ones they say have been flooding Liberia's media landscape during the ongoing election season. Alpha Daffy Senkpeni is the executive director of Local Voices Liberia, a fact-checking agency in Liberia funded by the U.S. Agency for International Development. He says political parties and their supporters are inciting violence through fake news. We have a little huge po portion of our population that is illiterate. So the possibility of trying to analyze or dissect this information from facts becomes a problem. So people tend to run with what they hear. So if you have a certain disinformation that we may read dangerous, permeating the society, getting entrenched into the society, it might lead to violence. In its examination of pre-election violence that killed two people in September, the Press Union of Liberia says three radio stations in Lofa County, funded by politicians from different divides, may have incited people against one another. The union is still investigating the incident. Community members were complaining that rival stations were inciting uh, one another against, uh, against community members, so we had to intervene and talk them. For like four days, four to five days, then boom, the violence started. Election results dragged past one week after voting day, fueling tension and speculation about tallying and results rigging. Local Voices Liberia says politicians and propagandists use the credibility of international observer missions from the European Union and the African Union to create fake results and speculations over social media. Sempeni says they have had to react quickly to stop the spread of disinformation. So if you can able to cut that disinformation by providing the facts soon as you come across that disinformation, it limits the tension amongst the citizenry. The Press Union of Liberia says it is putting measures in place to track fake news and hold people accountable for what they share on traditional and social media, including hate speeches. We track ethical transgressions. So these journalists form an ethical transgression. We transfer them to the National Media Council, who in turn investigate their conduct. We follow the funding to the Media Council, who will move on to investigate people actually involved with with those perceived in inciting comments. As Liberia's election appears to head toward a runoff, media watchers continue to advocate for responsible journalism to promote peace. And now let's go for stories happening on the African continent. Chiamaka Mwafo has that package. 
Niger's military leaders say they have foiled an attempt by ousted President Mohamed Bazoum to escape their custody on Thursday. Bazoum, who was overthrown by the military on July 26, attempted to flee in the night with his family, cooks and security, according to the regime spokesman Amadou Abdramain. Abdramain said that the escape beat failed and the main actors and some of the accomplices were arrested. An investigation has also been launched. The attempted escape comes as the first group of French troops arrived in neighboring Chad on Thursday after being ordered out by Niger's military rulers. France has continued to support the ousted leader since the coup and is calling for his release. The Democratic Republic of Congo's Electoral Commission, CERNI, has declared admissible the 24 candidates registered for the 20 December presidential election according to a list published on Friday, but still to be examined by the Constitutional Court. The definitive list of candidates will be published on November 18th, on the eve of the official opening of an electoral campaign that began de facto several weeks ago. Among the provisional candidacies received by this journey between 9 September and 8 October is that of the incumbent president, Felix Shisekedi, who has been in power since January 2019 and is running for a new five-year term. Opposing him, the opposition has lined up several heavyweights. Dr. Dennis Mukwege, winner of the 2018 Nobel Peace Prize. Moise Katumbi, the wealthy businessman and former governor of Katanga. Martin Fayulu, the unsuccessful candidate in the 2018 presidential election, which he claims to have won, amongst others. The presidential election will be coupled with legislative, provincial and communal elections for which thousands of candidates have been registered. Burkina Faso's health ministry has declared a dengue fever epidemic amid the deadliest outbreak in years. More than 200 people have died, and now cases are rising sharply. There have been 50,478 suspected cases and 214 deaths of the mosquito burn illness this year, the ministry said in a statement released on Wednesday. Mostly in the urban centres of the capital, Ugadugu and Bobo Jalusu, it said that about 20% of the cases and that were recorded last week alone. Dengue kills an estimated 20,000 people worldwide each year. Rates of the disease have risen eightfold since 2000, driven largely by climate change, the increased movement of people and urbanization. And that's the much we have on Roundup Africa. And with that, we wrap up this program for this week. You can watch more via all our social media platforms and also on our YouTube live stream. From me, I'm Ayuba Ilya and the entire team. Thank you for watching. Bye for now.